Hello, good morning. Welcome to session 19 of TAG, Pathways to Post-Conflict Remembrance. Uh, my name is Lee, and I'm a, a finishing PhD student at the Institute of Archaeology. Uh, my research looks at a uh, Chinese private museum that looks, on, uh, that looks at um, uh, conflict histories in the 20th century of Chinese history. Um, I'm Louisa, I'm also based in the Institute of Archaeology. Um, fi finally a PhD looking at the commemoration of the Napoleonic Wars in a national European identity context. Um, so it is our mutual interest in conflict, post-conflict remembrance that made us come up with the idea of this session. And we're currently living in a time where past conflicts are lavishly commemorated. Um, look at the bicentenary of the Battle of Waterloo in 2015, centenary of the First World War, or, for example, more recent thing, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, while contemporary months are being followed on the world stage and future ones are being dreaded with fear. Um, across the world, past and present conflicts and the heritages are being instrumentalized for the formation and reformation of various identities, including um, national identities, as well as patriotic and nationalistic sentiments. Um, as a result, conflicts and the heritages are holding a crucial role um, in ongoing shifts and changes of contemporary politics and societies. So we denote a shift um, in the realm of social memory studies since the late 1990s, um, where critical attention uh, has been moved from the tangible embodiment of memories, the monuments, archives, towards the practice of their construction and process of knowledge making. Socialist Jeffrey uh, Olick suggests that the concept of collective memory encompasses a wide variety of nonomic products and practices. Upon this distinction, he stresses the importance of viewing memory as a diverse and dynamic processes, by which he means that collective memory is something, or rather many things, that we do, not something or many things that we have. Um, we chose the term remembrance to clearly distinguish it from memory and following Bruker's argument that amongst danger in using the metaphor of memory to refer to commemorative sites or shared narratives of the past is the fact that it threatens um, to elight problems of causality. After all, individuals remember, repress, forget, and are traumatized, not societies. We are understanding post-conflict remembrance as an agent-driven agent and contested process which aims to examine political, moral, eth and ethical dynamics um, of this process through institutional and individual efforts. Um, we also chose the word pathways um, to emphasize the plurality of the field, um, which is clearly reflected in the diversity of our papers being presented today. And the papers not only vary in locality, temporality, um, and also in discipline, in discipline and methodological approaches. Um, this session highlights the versatility of the con concept of post-conflict remembrance, not only because of its historical significance and long-lasting influence, but also its potential and theoretical concept in which, in turn, um, could be used in different areas of study. So our proposition uh, for you through, the, you know, through the, the session abstract is to think along the presentations uh, about the intellectual or critical potency of the idea of post-conflict remembrance as a theoretical uh, concept and what does it mean to think along the lines of a post-conflict in, in, in a sense of post-conflict remembrance as different ways of acting or reacting towards an awareness of previous conflict public or private as a framework approach way of engaging and attention towards a demand a cultural logic a critical lens which can inform research and action and uh, so different from the what you know has been in, understood as a memorial or commemorative approach uh, by say producing narratives or imageries that make conflicts more visible uh, by telling stories of individuals and groups of people um, and the, uh, human fate we want to inform something different a way of thinking that enables people to engage creatively and critically with past conflicts to read phenomenon of remembrance from a critical and creative perspective to, to respond, to discover, to respond to their lingering and often overseen influences. 
So as the papers will demonstrate, such engagements can be in the form of lawsuits, political campaigns and speeches, academic research, performative arts, and hopefully many more. So in the first part of uh, our session, um, well, there's a slight uh, uh, change of order uh, given uh, well, two, two of the uh, uh, speakers can't make it. And uh, uh, Xavier will, will go first to take us to the history of the Spanish Civil War and talk about how the efforts to rediscover the archaeological heritage of the Republican Air Force may constitute a form of contestation against the Franklin's discourse to erase the memory of the Republican Army. And then Ryan Nolan's paper is engaged with the complicated issues surrounding the uh, 2016 commemoration of the 100-year anniversary of the 1916 rising in Ireland. And then Cathy will talk about the contested process of restitution surrounding a collection of archaeological finds discovered by the Japanese archaeologists archaeologist since the 1920s in the Japanese-occupied Manchuria of northeast China. And she will introduce the history of these archaeological finds, the material of looted national history from the end of Second World War till the present day. Um, after break, um, so during the second half, we have Susan Che who will take us to Hawaii um, and the court cases fighting for greater forms of indigenous political recognition and sovereignty over historical land and resource rights. Then Ida Keiko um, brings us back to London and her work with political activists and their engagement with the practices of remembrance as part of movement building. And finally, we've got Helia Marsal, who will conclude our session addressing how performance art can bring memories to the fore and how memories of conflict are presented through human body.